What follows is a reading of an essay by Paul Anderson, wherein modern atomic theory is explained on a basic level, but it's written in English, a non-standard form of modern English in which most, if not all, words not of Germanic origin are replaced with words of Germanic origin. These Germanic replacements can be simply archaic words fallen out of use from Old or Middle English, some of which are used despite being derived from Anglo-French, borrowed from other Germanic languages like German, Dutch, and the descendants of Old Norse, or wholly new words based on the Germanic equivalents to non-Germanic roots. What results of this form of linguistic purification of English is a language that, while certainly unfamiliar to the modern standard English speaker, still sounds rather homely, as we shall see as an explanation of atomic theory is expunged of its Latin and Greek-derived terminology in favor of Germanic vocabulary, which would be an interesting task when science was born out of the Latin-dominated Enlightenment period. One can read along with the text linked in the description, although I myself has made some edits for typos or for the few remaining non-Germanic words that made it through the cracks. For most of its being, mankind did not know what things are made of, but could only guess. With the growth of world ken, we began to learn, and today we have a beholding of stuff and work that watching bears out, both in the workstead and in daily life. The underlying kinds of stuff are the first stuffs, which link together in sundry ways to give rise to the rest. Formerly we knew of ninety-two first stuffs, from water stuff, the lightest and barest, to emir stuff, the heaviest. Now we have made more, such as eiger stuff and hell stuff. The first stuffs have their being as moats called unclefts. These are mightly small. One seed weight of water stuff holds a tail of them like six followed by twenty-three knots. Most unclefts link together to make what are called bulk bits. Thus the water stuff bulk bit bestands of two water stuff unclefts, the sour stuff bulk bit of two sour stuff unclefts, and so on. Some kinds, such as sun stuff, keep alone. Others, such as iron, cling together in ices when in the fast standing, yet there are yet more yoke ways. When unlike unclefts link in a bulk bit, they make bindings. Thus, water is a binding of two water stuff unclefts and one sour stuff uncleft, while a bulk bit of one of the four stuffs making up flesh may have a thousand, thousand or more unclefts of these two first stuffs together with cold stuff and choke stuff. At first, it was thought that the uncleft was a hard thing that could be split no further, hence the name. Now we know it is made up of lesser moats. There is a heavy kernel with a forward bone stonish lading, and beset on all sides is one or more light moats with a backward lading. The least uncleft is that of ordinary water stuff. Its kernel is a lone forward lading moat called a first bit. Outside of it is a backward lading moat called a bone stone bit. The first bit has a heaviness of about 1840 fold that of the burn stone bit. Early world can folk thought that burn stone bits slung about the kernel like the earth about the sun but now we understand that they are more like waves or clouds. In all other unclefts are found other moats as well, about as heavy as the first bit but with no lading, known as neither bits. We know a kind of water stuff with one neither bit in the kernel along with its first bit. Another kind has two neither bits. Both kinds are seldom. The next greatest first stuff is sun stuff, which has two first bits and two burnstone bits. The everyday sword also has two neither bits in the kernel. If there are more or less, the unclefts will soon break asunder. More about this later. The third first stuff is stone stuff, with three first bits, three burnstone bits, and its own share of neither bits. And so it goes, on through such everyday stuffs as coal stuff, six first bits, or iron, twenty-six, to ones more lately found. Ymir stuff, ninety-two, was the last until men began to make some higher still. It is the burnstone bits that link, and so their tale fast sets how a first stuff behaves and what kinds of bulk bits it can help make. The world can of this behaving, in all of its manifold ways, is called mingling can. Minglingers have found that as the uncleftish tail of the first stuffs, that is the tail of first stuffs in their kernels, waxes, after a while they begin to show an own ships not unlike those of others that went before them. So, for show deal, stone stuff, glasswort stuff, potash stuff, red stuff, and blue gray stuff can each link with only one uncleft of water stuff, while coal stuff, flint stuff, German stuff, tin, and lead can each link with four. This is readily seen when all are set forth in what is called the tailboard of the first stuffs. When an uncleft or bulk bit wins one or more bonestone bits above its own, it takes on a backward lading. When it loses one or more, it takes on a forward lading. Such a moat is called a fairer, for that the drag between unlike ladings flits it. When burnstone bits flip by themselves, it may be as a bolt of lightning, a spark off some fast standing chunk, or the everyday flow of burnstone is through wires. Coming back to the uncleft itself, the heavier it is, the more neither bits as well as first bits in its kernel. Indeed, soon the tail of neither bits is the greater. Unclefts, with the same tail of first bits but unlike tails of neither bits, are called samesteads. Thus, everyday sour stuff has eight neither bits with its eight first bits. 
There are also kinds with 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11 nitro bits. A same stat is known by the tail of both kernel modes, so that we have Sour Stuff 13, Sour Stuff 14, and so on, with Sour Stuff 16 being by far the most found. Having the same number of brunstone bits, the same stats of a first stuff behave almost alike minglingly. They do show some unlikenesses outstandingly among the heavier ones, and these can be worked to sunder same stats from each other. Most same stats of every first stuff are unabiding. Their kernels break up, each at its own speed. This speed is written as a half-life, which is how long it takes for half of any deal of same set thus to shift itself. The doing is called light rotting. It may happen fast or slowly, and in any of sundry ways, off hanging on the make of the kernel. A kernel may spit out two first bits with two neither bits, that is a sun stuff kernel, thus leaping two steads back in the tailboard and four weights back in heaviness. It may give off a burnstone bit from a neither bit, which thereby becomes a first bit, and thrust the uncleft one stead up the board while keeping the same weight. It may give off a forward bit, which is a moat with the same weight as a burnstone bit, but with a forward lading, and thereby spring one stead down the board while keeping the same weight. Often, too, a moat is given off with neither lading nor heaviness, called the wee neither bit. In much light rotting, a moat of light with the most short wavelength comes out as well. For although light oftenest behaves as a wave, it can be looked on as a moat, the light bit. We have already said, by the way, that a moat of stuff can behave not only as a chunk, but as a wave. Down among the unclefts, things do not happen in steady flowings, but in leaps between standing that are forbidden. The knowledge hunt of this is called lump beholding. Nor are stuff and work unakin, rather they are groundwise the same, and one can be shifted into the other. The kinship between them is that work is like unto weight manifolded by the foresight of the haste of light. By shooting motes into kernels, world can folk have shifted same steads of one first stuff into same steads of another. Thus did they make emir stuff into eiger stuff and hell stuff, and they have afterward gone beyond these. The heavier first stuffs are all highly light rottish, and therefore are not found in the green world. Some of the higher same steads are splitly, that is, when a neither bit strikes a kernel of one, as for Shodio Emir stuff 235, it bursts into lesser kernels and free neither bits. The latter can then split more Emir stuff 35. When this happens, weight shifts into work. It is not much of the whole, but nevertheless, it is awesome. With enough strength, lightweight unclefts can be made to together melt. In the sun, through a row of strikings and light rottings, four unclefts of water stuff in this way become one of sun stuff. Again, some weight is lost as work. And again, this is greatly big when set beside the work gotten from a minglig stewin such as fire. Today we wield both kinds of uncleft stewins in weapons, and kernelish splitting gives us heat and burnstoneness. We hope to do likewise with together melting, which would yield an unhemmed wellspring of work for mankindish good gain. Soothly, we live in mighty years. Sothlicha, thanks for hearing. Yeah.